Now let's go ahead and talk about light and dark mode. When we were building our application, we were only building it kind of like in the light mode. So if I go to features, I can go to toggle appearance, and I can change that. And you can do the same thing in Xcode previews also, by the way. Okay. Now by default, Swift UI will work automatically most of the time uh, for light and dark mode. As you can see, I can go ahead and toggle this and it still looks pretty decent. All right. Now, what if we actually want to change these colors a little bit differently? So I know it's working fine, but maybe we want to change these colors a little bit differently. So let's start with those reminder stats view. And let's see how they look like right now. Currently, we're not really applying any kind of a style to it. So whatever the default style is, uh, this is going to be appearing. You can see right over here, we're applying the gray color, which basically means that it's always going to be gray color. So no matter what, whether you're looking at in the dark mode or the light mode, it will always be the same. And you can always check in the Xcode previews how it will look like in different modes. Either you can go ahead and toggle the appearance from here, or if you want, you can always go to the bottom and add some group. So I can go ahead and add a group, and I can go ahead and set also the environment for the key path for the color scheme, and I can say the dark. And now you can see another tab popped up. And this will how it will look like on the dark, which is kind of weird because sometimes it just doesn't really show correctly. Let me go ahead and remove the background color and see if it's so kind of weird. I thought it's gonna show us the dark, but well, let's go ahead and see if we can toggle. Let's see over here. Okay, so this is how it's in dark. This is in light. I'm not really sure why this is not working. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. But anyway, so you can already see there's a problem over here. Well, right now I'm not even providing, well, maybe this was why, because the foreground color was there. Okay, so that was not good. Okay, let me go ahead and do it again. So see what I did? There was a foreground color that was white, so that was hard coded. So that is the main reason. So definitely check it out that your foreground color is not set to be white. All right, so now we have created a group with two different views. We have this view and we have the other view with the dark theme. And let's see how it looks like. It's kind of look, doesn't look correct at all actually right now. So we'll have to do something about it. Let's see how it will look like on the dark mode. Okay, see that? So something over here is kind of wacky. I mean, it's not really working correctly. Anyway, so what we want to do is to check if it's a dark mode, we want to select a different color. And most of the time, your previews as well as your app in Swift UI is going to accommodate for the light and dark, but this time I actually do want to set some custom colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the environment for the color scheme because this is going to allow me to check which color scheme or what do I need to set correctly. So now I can go over here and say background color, which is simply background. And now I can check over here that if the color scheme is equals to dark, then we can use a particular color. Let's go ahead and first say red. And if it is white, well, it's not dark, then it's white, then we'll use the blue color. Now, I don't really want the, the blue or, you know, the red or whatever, uh, uh, red and blue, but uh, let's go ahead and first check it out. Okay, it looks like it is switching. You can definitely see these things switching around. There we go. But I don't really want the red and blue. It looks kind of weird. So what I want to do is I want to perform color extension and define my own colors. So I'm going to go into my extension, add a new file. Color plus extensions. And one of the old ways and a much better way of defining these extensions or defining color was using the color literal. Unfortunately, uh, you can see that it's kind of broken. It never really shows up. So I'll extend the color and I will create a, you know, I can create like a dark gray or something. So I can also create like a static 
let dark gray and assign it some sort of a color. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and assign kind of like a dark gray color over here. So we have assigned this dark gray color and we can also assign a different color like an off white color. Let's go ahead and add that. There we go. Okay, so now we have the dark gray color and the off white color. We can go back to our code and try to use that. So over here, when the color scheme is dark, then we can apply some sort of a color over here. So I'm just going to go ahead and say color dot dark gray. And else we are going to go ahead and apply, you can guess it, off white. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, see if we can refresh our preview to see what's going on. So right now, the first preview is, there we go. So the first preview is for the light mode. It looks pretty good. And the second preview is for the dark mode. So it looks pretty nice, actually. What about the foreground color? Well, the same exact thing we're going to do for the foreground color also. Just going to go ahead and add the dark for the off-white. So we kind of like reversed it. And now you can see the foreground color is also being applied. All right, so that's pretty fine. Apart from that, now let's go ahead and run our application. Let's go to the home view. And this is how it actually looks like. So I think it looks pretty nice, nice and clear. And if we try to toggle it to a dark mode, it actually looks really nice. You can see in the dark mode, it all of the things are nice, nice and popping out. So it looks very, very good. All right. Next step. We'll just go and check all the different views that we have. So if we, if you want, you can just go ahead and jump on to your home view, check over there if you need anything to be done over there. Uh, everything looks fine. The next view, you can go ahead and jump into my list view. And that's what you're going to be doing. You're, you're going to be going through every single view and you're going to be applying different colors to it. All right. Now, one thing I want to do is go to the home view and let's go ahead and pin this out because we can see how it will look like. And let's go back to the color scheme, which is light mode. Looks pretty good. And we'll jump into my list view. Okay, looks pretty nice. Now over here also, we can apply different colors. So you can see over here, we have a V stack and everything is inside a navigation link, which is right here. And if we want to apply a different color, we can simply use the same exact thing. There we go. Make sure that you follow the color scheme. So we need to make sure that we're injecting the color scheme. Okay. All right, so list row background, it's telling us to be dark and off-white. Uh, it's a very small, subtle change, actually. Let me go ahead and do that. I don't know if you'll be able to see it over here. Uh, but apart from that, it looks pretty fine. Uh, the color, it looks okay, I guess, you know. I mean, if you want, you can go ahead and change it in a different way also. And the same thing you can apply for the cell itself. I mean, you're using a cell over here. You, we can apply a different color to the cell also. All right, so now you can see it's a little bit different color. It's not everything is blue. So now it looks like it makes a little bit more sense applying these colors. And we can go to the light mode, and now it looks much nicer also. So this is what you'll be doing. I mean, you'll be just going to, going through like different views, and you'll be looking at where, you know, where you can apply those things, if those things actually make any sense, if you're going to be detailed view, if you're going to just go on every single view, and going to be seeing that where you can apply those colors. And, but the, the important part over here is that you can always change the color by applying, which we did over here. Uh, where is it? By applying the color scheme. And the color scheme is going to tell you whether you are using, you know, uh, the light mode or whether you're using the dark mode. And that can become a very, very important as you can 
already experience. All right, let's go ahead and run the application. Now, obviously, if you do want to apply different colors and all that, you can definitely do that. And you can see that everything looks pretty nice. So this is, we are in the light mode right now, and I can apply different things. There we go. Let's say that we have a yellow list, and let's see if this part works. We want to move it. Well, that's the only list we have, I guess, right now. Uh, what about if we go back and try to add another list? So I'm gonna go ahead and add green list. Green list. Okay, we have the green list. And go back to the yellow list, select one of the items, change it to green list, go back, save it. So you can see that that particular item is now moved to the green list from a particular list. So you can see it's actually working out pretty nice and we have all is working and completed is working. We can mark it incomplete and it will be removed. And then we have scheduled and it says today it's two, but I don't really see anything over here. So that is definitely something that we should be investigating more. Probably my formula for today or getting the items for today might be a little bit wrong. So I'll see if I can fix that. If not, and if you can fix that, let me know and I'll be more than happy to check it out. All right. And there you have it. We have created a lot of different uh, application. We started with, uh, you know, we started with like a completely plain nothing. And now we have created the complete application. And uh, let's go ahead and run it again and see how the search actually behaves. And I'm gonna go ahead and also toggle this appearance to be dark. It actually looks really nice and dark. And let's say that if I'm searching for something, it actually comes up, okay. CA, because there is the word CA in there. If I search for reminder, you can see all the reminders coming up. Very nice. So we have started from completely from scratch and we are able to build this application, uh, which persists to core data. All right, so very, very nice. It looks really nice, it functions really nice. You can actually start using it uh, for your main application. And don't forget about the reminders. We also implemented the reminders. So it will be available. If you set something, if you schedule something, you will get a notification. Now in the next lecture, I'm gonna be talking a little bit about a very different thing, like how you can make these icons for the app. Uh, and there are some artificial intelligence AI websites where you can go and create those icons. All right, so we'll check it out in the next lecture. Hey, if you have enjoyed this video and want to learn more about iOS development, then check out my website, awesomesharp.school. This is one of the largest catalogs for iOS development videos. You can simply go to awesomesharp.school, click on the courses, and you can see all the list of all the courses that I have. And I'm always working on new courses. I'm trying to update existing courses. Check out these amazing courses, full stack iOS, Development Bootcamp. This is where you will learn how to do Swift UI with Vapor, server-side Swift. This is one of the only courses that is available anywhere online. So this is a great course. Then we have the Core Data Bootcamp. And apart from Core Data Bootcamp, Swift Data Bootcamp. If you want to learn more about the architecture for Swift UI, then I have a course for you, the MV Design Pattern. Apart from that, Testament Development, Create ML, and so much more. So Anything related to iOS development, I have course on that. And you can purchase these courses for one-time pricing, and all the pricing are listed over here, or you can sign up for the monthly membership. And the great thing about monthly membership is that it gives you access to the 22 comprehensive courses, 130 hours of videos, digital books, and not only the current courses, but also future courses, and you know that I'm always working on courses. Apart from that, I also host workshops. Now these workshops are live workshops uh, hosted over Zoom. They are two and a half to three hours long, very hands-on. And I've hosted a couple of different workshops. They were very well received and attendees, they learn a lot. So my new workshop is coming up, Swift Data Fundamentals, April 6, 2024. 
Then I have workshop planned for testing also on April 27. And I have some other workshop that I'm planning for machine learning in iOS and Swift UI fundamentals and so on. So you definitely check out azamsharp.school and check out all of my courses, check out the workshops. This is really the number one resource if you're trying to move your career ahead and if you are going from that junior to a senior developer, then this is a website for you, all right? So check out awesomesharp.school. Thank you.